Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today I thought I would share with you an update on how the hair is going. Uh, I transitioned to gray. I started two years ago. Actually, this month uh, was my two-year anniversary of starting the whole process and I am done, as you can see. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, for some of you, you're just thinking about going gray. Others of you are in the process and maybe you're getting a little discouraged so I want to give you a little bit of a pep talk. I hope you're willing uh, to listen. But before I do that, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. I would love for you to join the Weird and Wonderful family. I focus primarily on fragrance, but I also do lifestyle videos, uh, you know, uh, just little bits and pieces all over there. So if that interests you, I would love for you to hit that button. And uh, yeah, for those of you that are in, uh, in the community already, thank you so much for watching, commenting, and all that good stuff. So, Without further ado, let's get into this. Now, uh, like I said, two years ago, I decided to go gray. Uh, now, I had always thought to myself that I would wait until I was 50, I think primarily because I read an article uh, on Jamie Lee Curtis and she decided to go gray. And she's actually the one that, like reading that article, made me actually consider it. Before that, I was like, ah, no, I don't ever wanna go gray. But for whatever reason, that kind of sparked my attention. And my hair was very, very dark. So I'll kind of have pictures on here interspersed so you can see what it was like before. But I had really long, dark hair. I'd had it like that for uh, about 25 years. So long, long time pr prior to me dyeing my hair dark, my hair was actually a dark ash. And hopefully I can find a, a photo so you can see what it looked like uh, as I was growing up. So I had this ash hair. Um, and uh, like it was kind of almost a, a white silver blonde when I was little and then it turned a darker ash um, and I just didn't like it and so I dyed it dark and it was dark then for 25 years. Had it that color my whole entire time. Really enjoyed that color, loved being a brunette. Uh, but then I just got sick of dyeing my hair every two weeks. So my hair was really quite long and I found that I was having to dye it uh, every two weeks. Otherwise I had what I called the skunk stripe. So because I didn't have a whole lot of layers in my hair, um, I, I just had that skunk stripe and it was only like it would be about... I would say a week and a half and then I would start to feel just kind of a little bit blech about uh, the way my hair was looking. And I got sick of that roller coaster. And so um, I had just bought a whole whack of dye. Uh, I'd buy it, my sister's a hairdresser, so I'd pick it up from the professional hair salon. Uh, and so I just bought a whole entire thing of like five or six tubes of dye new uh new peroxide or whatever it was that i was using and then for whatever reason right after that decided i'm done and i don't know what it was that made me decide that i just was done and i think that that's something to really remember you will know when you're ready and and don't bother doing it until you're ready don't let someone tell you that you should do it if you're feeling that unction wait until you're ready like th there'll be that unction and then you have to make the decision and you don't have to rush that decision you can mull it over as long as you like there are no rules to this journey but i am telling you it's an amazing journey so finally i decided to go ahead and let the bottle go uh, quit bowing to the bottle and not dye it anymore um, now, I watched a ton of videos on uh, what that process was like, and um, yeah, then I just decided to go for it. So the first thing I want to tell you, don't let anyone rush you in that decision. The second thing I want to tell you is don't let anybody uh, negatively influence you. So I didn't tell many people that I was going to go gray. And the reason why is I find that in life, um, anything that's worth doing, anything that kind of you set your heart to, there's always going to be a negative voice saying, oh, you shouldn't do that, you'll look old, or uh, do you really think that you want to do that? Oh, it's going to be so hard. You know, and it's in any aspect of life, you'll find that there's those negative people or negative voices that try to convince you that you shouldn't do what your heart is inclining towards. 
Um, and so I didn't tell many people uh, that I was going to do it. Now, when I started, um, I would blurt out... <laughs> Uh, I was so self-conscious at first with that demarcation line. I hated it. You feel ugly. And so I would tell, I told everybody, I'd just go, yeah, I'm, I'm growing my hair out. Uh, yeah, I'm going silver. I didn't ask their opinion, but I told them because it made me feel better. It made me feel less, less self-conscious. Now, at first, it was excruciating. It was absolutely excruciating having those roots. And so um, I wore... I wore a cap a lot. I started obviously in March, so I wore a cap for the first little while or like my hair was longer, so I'd put it up in a top knot. So those were kind of my two ways of coping. Um, I've got a video on things that you can do uh, to kind of cope uh, with the demarcation. Uh, now, uh, I, like I said, stopped in March. In August, I thought to myself, okay, I wanna do something different because I was wearing it up in a bun tons but I found that it was starting to break my hair off. So I'm like, okay, I want to, I want to go through this journey, but I want my hair healthy by the end of it. So for me, I decided to get it cut. Now at first I was like, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to see if I can get streaks put in that kind of match my roots. Well, I found out that that was like going to be really difficult, would be very costly and potentially damage my hair. So I chose not to do that. Uh, and I chose instead to get it cut really short. So, uh, you know, I cut it like quite short, like it was about like this. Um, I had thought about actually doing a pixie cut just to get rid of the dark hair as fast as possible. But my hairdresser thankfully talked me out of that. And she said, if your end game is to have longer hair, then I would definitely, she, she strongly recommended that I not go that route because then not only are you dealing with a demarcation, but eventually you have to go through a regrowth process, which is always awkward as well. So um, get yourself a good hairdresser if you choose to cut it. Uh, go for something that you can handle. Again, everybody's different in how they go about this. I know lots of women that chose to keep their hair long through the process because they love their long hair. I think that that's awesome. Uh, I chose to cut it and I'm really glad I did. Um, again, um, throughout this process, uh, first of all, the gr going gray with that demarcation, but also cutting it, I had to figure out who I was besides my hair. <laughs> so it's amazing how much identity is wrapped up in the way that we look, the way we present ourselves, our hair, all of that. So, um, you know, having to let go of my dark hair was painful because I really liked the dark. I liked the dramatic. I liked the moodiness, uh, all of that. So I felt really sad to all of a sudden have these, uh, you know, gray or silver roots showing. I was excited, but still, like, I felt really sad and had to mourn the loss of my dark hair and had to figure out what my identity was based around. Like, I was challenged in that area. Uh, but then as well, uh, cutting it short, I'd always had this long hair, so I had to lose the security of this long hair, which was a whole other aspect. You know, I had to mourn the loss of that hair and the way I'd always styled it. Just a lot of like weird, different transition-y type feelings. Uh, but I loved all of it because in the midst of that, I was exploring who I, who I was. So I found that the gray hair journey is not just about going from one color to the other. It's about learning uh, more about self-acceptance and uh, in embracing age, uh, embracing my natural color, uh, which I had never done. Like I specifically had chosen a dark color for a reason. I didn't like my natural color. So to all of a sudden decide for whatever reason, I'm going to enjoy my natural color took me on a bit of a self-exploration journey, which I'm so grateful for. I learned so much about myself. Now, um, the one thing that I would have to say is if you're in the midst of the process, do not give up. Like, bottom line, you can give up if you want. Nobody's forcing you to keep going on this journey, and it's tough. But if it's something that you began, I want to encourage you to 
finish it to completion because the whole process, if you embrace it and allow yourself to experience all those feelings, feelings of awkwardness, feelings of, uh, why am I doing this? I'm going to look old. Uh, allowing those negative voices to get in your head. If you, if you work through that stuff, not only do, does your hair change, but you change inside. I changed inside. I became more confident. I, I became more accepting of myself. So there's lots of really cool things that happen during this journey if you allow, if you embrace all of that and allow yourself to change uh, as your hair changes. So as you can see, um, this is my hair color now. I've got a lot more white kind of in the sides. Uh, the Like I wore it straight today so that you could see. Um, hopefully you can kind of get a feel for what it looks like. Uh, the dark pieces are my natural ash color and they've blended really nicely with the white that's come in. And so I'm really loving this. Um, it's, I, I was hoping actually for more white, so that'll come as, as time goes on, but, um, yeah, I'm done. I completed it. I completed the process. I want to encourage you to complete the process. There's so much that I learned about myself. I had to mourn the loss of the hair that I had chosen for years, uh, to embrace something more natural. And I loved the, what happened in me. I feel like I'm more accepting of myself. I feel like um, I did something, like I know it's just hair, but it was two years of growing it out. So I, 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 I saw something through to the end and I'm so thankful that I did. I can't believe how, how enjoyable the process was. Even the ugly parts, I grew through it. Like, you know, like the feeling awkward and different stuff like that. It's just been an amazing journey and I want to encourage you to keep going uh, or start because it's been phenomenal. I feel like I was a caterpillar like for so long you know, I was trying to, uh, you know, hold on to being younger somehow. Uh, and then going through this process, I feel like I emerged, I blossomed. I love having silver hair. Like, I love it. It's awesome. Uh, so yeah, it was a way better experience than I ever imagined, especially what I learned about myself. And uh, number one, I learned that I don't look older with gray hair for all of those negative voices. Uh, I feel like I actually look younger. Um, I also learned that I enjoy embracing my age. I'm, I'm happy to be 51. I'm excited about being a vibrant, sexy, healthy uh, woman in her 50s that wants to take on the world and, with her natural hair. <laughs> And I'm excited to be part of a whole entire movement of women that are going, no, I don't need to embrace that. And silver hair is beautiful. Um, yeah, like I, I love Lisa from Peaches Skin Care. She always says, embrace your silver sparkle. I think that's how she puts it. And I just love that. We all have this beautiful silver sparkle that we can embrace. And it shows, uh, it's, it's, to me, a crown of wisdom, a crown of experiences in life. Uh, and I'm so thankful that I did it. Uh, and again, you have to be ready. It has to be something you want. I wanted it, so I did it. And I'm glad I saw it through and it's so worth it. The whole thing is worth it. I wanna encourage you if you're just starting out or if you're kind of halfway through and kind of, uh, keep going. It's worth it. If you get to the end of the journey, you can always re-dye it. If you hate it, re-dye it. Um, if you love it, great. But it's worth doing even for what it does inside you. Um, and if you've given up and you've dyed your hair, that's okay. You can start again when you're ready. There's no such thing as failure. It's just hair. <laughs> I've embraced this this aging process and I'm loving it. Uh, yeah, I, I think silver is spectacular. So that's it. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Where are you at in your journey? How are you doing? Uh, just remember that you're not alone. Everybody feels awkward. 
everybody gets the negative comments uh, at, at some point. Uh, but I'm telling you, any woman, that, like all the videos you're going to watch, once their hair is, is finally grown out, they are so happy they did it. Anything that is worth doing oftentimes takes time and is a little bit difficult or a lot difficult. But those, those are the richest things in life, the things that are, you got to work for. Uh, those end up being such gems in life. So that's it. I hope you have an amazing week. Uh, let me know where you are in the journey and thank you for watching. We'll talk to you soon.